Hey guys, Footy Manager TV here and welcome to this new series. I said I was going to do this, the Hidden Attribute Challenge. I'll just show you for a quick example. If you miss that video, you cannot see the player's attributes. All you'll be able to see is the attribute analysis, the octagon, the graphical representation of the eight key stats they are good in or attributes in, but you still can't see those. You can't see the number attributes, which definitely makes it harder. You can see here, Steve Mildenhall, he's best in communication. Aerially, he's decent. Shot stopping is decent as well. And that's all you can tell. And also, also one of the key things you have to judge, you have to judge your assistant. Like we got Darrell Clark and you got to judge his playability and potential. It's nine. So it's not going to be too amazing. You got to judge how they play in games as well. I noticed that a lot of the time as well. If I had a player that was had good attributes, but he was playing bad, I would still continue playing him because he wasn't playing good. But I see his attributes really good and I'm forced to play. Not forced to play him. I just feel like I have to play him because of his attributes. So that's another thing you have to take into account. And also you've got to see their training, their happiness and everything. You've got to take that all to account because it affects results. It's not just about the attributes. A lot of other things come into play. So this is what's going to be. Hopefully, a lot of people think this is a good challenge. Of course, I know a lot of people like Manchester United. I might go back to it at a different stage when I stop doing this, but I really want to try this, and hopefully, it's followed well because this is probably the hardest thing. I don't think anyone else on YouTube is doing this, but Football Manager videos are hard to find. If anyone else is doing it, uh, drop in the comments, but yeah, I think I'm definitely unique in this area, but anyway, moving on. So, I'm going to... That's how you can only judge by their reports this the attribute graphical representation uh, by the octagon or in training then you go to team i think it's team or individual individual you'll be able to see the training performance here if the arrow will be green or going down of course up or down that's the way who's like judging uh, the best of your team who's playing well in training and usually if it's realistic like real life players who do well in training will take that form into game time but of course some players train well, but they don't play well. That's another thing you have to take into account. So this just brings more of a challenge to it, and I will enjoy it. And here, Bristol Rovers, they do have a fairly young squad. They've got some young players, which I always like to see. So this is a good thing. Say if I just click on a guy here, you see Tom Lockyer. You can't just see he's good at whatever he... Like, this is really hard to judge what he's best at, to be honest. You can't tell. You can just see here, technically he's decent. Maybe has decent speed. Defending, he's good as well. Of course, being a central defender. Then you have to take into his height as well. He's only 168 centimeters, so you're not. You, that's not good for a center back, really. That's pretty small, so you might want to take that into account. And you go to reports, go back to Darrell Clark, and you see his judging ability and potential is yeah, ability is nine. That's not great. That's like half, pretty much. So it's nothing too amazing. So you might want to see your other staff, Stuart Naylor. Uh, what's he? What's Naylor's judging? 11 and 11. So we'll just continue to check all of them. Alan Walsh, what's he? 8-8. Eight and eight. Again, really average. Marcus Stewart, is is he better at judging? Let's see uh, what Marcus... Again, 7-7. Seven and seven, He's worse. And then Tom Ballard, is he a bit better in judging? No. Nope. So I might as well just... He's a regen as well. So I'll just leave on Clark. He's the best judging, as you saw. 9 ability and 11 potential. So you can see from his reports... He's a decent player for Skrill Premier side. So that's not really this level. But yeah, you've got to see his potential as well. He'll be a good Skybet League One central defender in the future. So if you continue on with that and you can see his strongest attributes in this part here, you can see his strongest area of the game is his athleticism. And specifically, it's the natural fitness. So you will be able to find out one of his key attributes through that way, his strongest area of his game. And then you can see his weakest area of his game. That's pretty obvious. I could tell that without seeing that. You could see his aerial ability. You see how it's not great from that showcase. And he's 168 centimeters. So obviously that's pretty clear to see that. So I'm not yeah, I'm not really confident with playing him at center back at the minute. He might need to find a better position at the club. So again, that's how I'm going to review the players. And of course, you can review them by their value as well. If they have a high value, of course, they're a good player in the game. So I'm just going to review my whole team and hopefully, yeah, this will be the first episode and I'll just give you a review of Bristol Rovers as well. Uh, we are predicted to come 20th, so that is not very good. Very, very low. And I might as well check out, I'll check Tom Parks out later, but he is the hot prospect and he's the captain as well. And Alan Gow is a key player. That's another way you can find out who's your better players. So Bristol Rovers, uh, the history of the club. 
the only honor or the best honor they've got is the Skybet League One or Division Three. Depends what you really uh, want to call it. Or Division Two is it called? Championship we called or used to be called Division One. Uh, or yeah, I'm not really sure about that. I've just seen people in comments saying. But anyway, that's the highest level they have won. Skybet League One. So there's so much expectations to reach. And you know, Manchester United had a lot of players, younger players coming through, but. I got bored with it because, well, honestly, I wasn't that bored with it. People were bored with it, and I wanted to show something different. I want to show all my talents in Football Manager, and this is just an additional one. I want to show you how you can play this way, much harder way, and hopefully it'll be more interesting as well. Definitely harder. So, yeah, it's just another series, a different series I want to bring to the table, more tips. That's what I mean. I don't care how many series I start. For me, it's more about giving as much tips as possible. And if it's starting different series, different saves, so be it. I just want to give as much tips as possible. Uh, to YouTube. That's why I started. So, yeah, you can see. I want to show you that where the, the highest position they've been as well. The championship, 13th in the championship. So, I have a goal and also a goal to go beyond there as well. So they've, they've never been in the Premier League. Of course, I would have said they would have won it. Okay. Uh, championship, they have in, been higher positions like a lot of years ago. What's the biggest position I can see here? Sixth. Six is the highest they've been. Okay. So, that's a goal to that's a goal for me to reach. Six in the Skybet Championship. And let's see if I can do that. And if I can do it with hidden attributes, that's the best thing you can do. So now I'm just going to be reviewing my team this first episode. And I did want to say I'm going to be showing every single match, maybe apart from preseason, I'll analyze the performances more. But I'll be showing you the key matches in the league, or yeah, all the matches in the league, so you can give me feedback. You can be like my other coaches and my subscribers. Again, uh, this wouldn't be like in my Manchester United one. I wouldn't need to do this. I'm going to be showing in extended highlights so I can show you. You can see who's playing well and maybe you can note how players are playing in a game or something and you can leave the comment. That, again, feels something that will be interactive and I want to get into my videos. So hopefully you can provide your feedback in the games and you will feel more, yeah, you'll feel more interested and you'll feel actually part of it somewhat. So hopefully you can do that and just provide me feedback. I've never said I'm amazing at the game. I think I'm good, but not amazing. I can always learn. So, yeah, I'd like to hear your thoughts. Thoughts, sorry. Um, where are we? We've only got one good goalkeeper. So we'll check out my squad here. This might be a long episode. We'll just see how it goes. Steve Mildenhall, he's an experienced keeper. No doubt. I don't need to check him out too much right now because he's going to be the goalkeeping role. He's experienced. I know that. Again, age is also something to take into account. But moving on to Michael Smith, whose value is 42.5K, a 24-year-old. He's 181 centimeters, decent height for a fullback, what you would expect, really. Check him out, 24-year-old. He's definitely a pacey right back for us. He can play maybe some other positions, just depend. I'll probably go with my Manchester United tactic because it was so good. Uh, hopefully, you don't get bored of it, though. But still, he's a fullback. You can see here, he's pretty fast. He's good at defending. Decent attacking as well, but not amazing. And you check out here. He's strong speed, but you saw that from the graphical representation from the octagon. That's still good. And according to Daryl Clark, he is a good player for Skybet League 2. So he's this level, no doubt, Michael Smith. I'll be happy with him. It really still depends how he performs in games, though. So uh, it's still to be learned uh, how he's going to play. Mark McChrystal, experienced player at the team, 29 years of age, 105k. He's worth... 186 centimeters. That's decent for a center back. It's not tall by any stretch of the imagination, though. And also the personality. This is something you want to look at as well. Personality balance. You got to get your teammates as the same personality. That will no doubt help in your result. He's left-footed, so no doubt want to play him in the left center back position. He doesn't really seem amazing. What three and a half star report? You see, report. He is a decent player from the Skybet League Two side. So. Again, he's definitely not a key player, and you can see he's an important first-team player, though. Uh, got to compare to my other centre-backs. Okay, Tom Parks, he's a centre-back. Let's see uh, what he is. He's worth 76k. He's 188 centimetres, so a bit taller. And yeah, he's the key player and a key young player. Five-star report. You can just see from all the stuff there, he's really good. Look at that. You can see from the report there, you can see from the octagon, he's a really good defender. He's got good height as well, really good. He's professional. And you can see their reputation as well. Reputation could be important. But you can see, yeah, defending is good. Aerial is pretty strong as well. So you can see his report. He will be a good player for Skrill Premier sides, even though I believe he can be better than that. His specific aspect, yeah, the aspect of his game he needs to work on is his strength. So that's something I'll work in the training. So that's something going to be really hard to do. Uh, I can only judge of what 
my assistant comes here. He says he needs to work on his strength. So that's what I'm going to work on. I'm someone who likes to actually work on the specific attribute from what I judge, what I think attribute needs work. So I'm going to judge there. Yeah, he needs to work on his strength. Take my assistant reports into account. And that also, uh, when improving your team, your staff is going to be really crucial, especially your assistant manager who's going to judge that. All your coaches, as when you know, when they give you a report, what to do with your players, when they say this player needs to work on a certain aspect and they feel this player shouldn't be taking set pieces or whatever or throw-ins. You gotta you really gotta focus on that more. I definitely haven't previously, so that's something I'm gonna take into account. It's pretty obvious here, Tom Parks, he's gonna be a key player in the future for us. Obviously, he came through the academy at Leicester City. Unfortunately couldn't really get into the first team. Didn't get any getting game time, but he's had experience at this level. He's been on loan at this league once. He's been on loan in Skybet League One. Uh, so yeah, he's had some experience at this level, and the past couple seasons at Bristol, especially last season, he was a key player, so no doubt he's going to be, continue to be a key player for us, and hopefully uh, be very, like, he'll be part of the future, he'll be there for a lot of seasons, unless we sell him, of course, so he's a key player, no doubt, uh, Tom Parks, but next up, Dean Woodards, uh, he's another experienced right back, a 29-year-old, here, yeah, I can't really get out of it too much. He doesn't seem too pacey, uh, decent defending and aerially. Uh, he's only a three-star report. Check it out here. He's unlikely to improve in the future, and he's a good player for school premier sides, according to Daryl Clark. So his weakest area of the game is the speed and pace. So at least I'm getting that right. I'm judging it good. His strongest area of the game is the aerial ability. So you can judge that. His worst, see, see the speed, it's not great, is it? But aerial ability is the best, along with defending. So... You can work on that, and he seems decent mentally as well. So that's something you really, I really got to focus on that and the reports, what my coaches say. I'm just going to mix them both together. So he's going to be that right back position. Lockie, I showed you already. Lee Brown, a 22 year old, still a little bit young, but still a very experienced. I want him to be experienced anyway. Uh, he's coming out of that. What I basically meant to say there is he's coming out of that young player stage and needs to become an experienced player for the team and a crucial player for the team. He can play left back and left midfield for me. He's very fast. You can see that through the, sp yeah, through the speed. Uh, but his weakest area of the game is the his jumping, his jumping reach. So that's, again, something I have to work on. You can really see that through aerial as well. You can see that's really poor, especially if you want him to play at left back. It's something you want to improve. So I'll be working on that in training. I'll be working on his jumping reach. And yeah, that's what you see. Uh, that's me being realistic. I have, to, yeah, I have to do what my coaches say because that's real life managers get feedback from their coaches as well. And I'm looking feedback for you as well through the player performances in games, but also how to improve them and that I'm always willing to listen. But next up, another young player, um, Sean and Lucas, I think that's how you say his name. If that's wrong, sorry, his first name, Sean and I think that's correct. But if I'm wrong, uh, please correct me. I've never seen that name before. That's just why. But anyway, you can tell this guy's a good talent because he's already played under the under 21s for Northern Ireland nine times so you can tell his experience but he's only listed as a backup player currently he's a uh, best attributes for a central midfielder is defending so he could be the defending type he's a young midfielder you can see here his strongest aspect of his game is his athleticism and stamina so that tells me he could make himself fit for every single game so he'll be an important player for me in most games no doubt but his weakest area of his game is his marking so that's definitely for a guy who's got good defensive attributes you can see they're defending He's probably his best attribute, really. So he's needing to improve that. So I'm going to go specific attribute and marking. Like my coach has said, I'm really going to judge of what they say for now so I can know. And next up, another young-ish player, Fabian Broghammer. He is a 23-year-old. He's 79 value, but he's right now listed as a backup player. He's going to be one of those wider players for me on the left wing, most likely. He's left only, left foot only. He's pretty quick. You can see there, speed. Check out his report. He's a decent player at this level, has potential to be a good Skybet League One left winger in the future. We have some players for the potential to go up to there. So, of course, it's pretty really self-explanatory, and you expect most wingers anyway to be quick and have poor strength. So, I'm not sure if I would want to work on the strength, though. I might want to work on another aspect of his game, but still, I might just work on the position of a winger. But that's still to be decided. I'm going to work it. Yeah, I'll work it out. Alan Gow, who's an experienced player on loan from Exeter. Definitely experienced player. He's a key player in the squad status, good value, one of the highest in the team. And this is a very interesting representation here. It's very up and down. So he's creative 
technical ability is good. Physical ability is good as well. So he seems he'll be a strong player. And definitely his experience in the team is going to be uh, something vital. So now you can probably notice me, I'm talking about something different within the game. I'm not really judging the attribute numbers, of course, because they're not there. I'm judging other aspects. And hopefully that you find that more interesting and more of a challenge as well. That's the key thing anyway. So he could play attacking midfielder or a left winger. But I'm probably going to play him on the left side because I don't really play with a cam. Center attacking midfielder, John Joe O2. O2, sorry. He is a good prospect. I know, yeah, because I think he, he used to play for Watford, and he was a younger player, was getting games in the championship. So he's had experience at that level, but unfortunately, he's dropped to a lower level. But he's still, uh, to me, he seems a good player at this level. And just judging, again, he seems another defensive type. He's physical, and his mental attributes will be good. Defending, he seems a better defender than a creator, so that's the role he's going to play for me. And you can see here, his best roles as he's a ball-winning midfielder. So uh, he's going to fit into there, hopefully. And there's potential to be a good sky bet league one central midfielder, another one who will be good for that level, but needs to work his tackling. So that's something I'm going to work on. But that's interesting, kind of. You see, I'm going to work specific attribute on tackling, but that is interesting because if you look at that again, you can see defending is his strongest attribute and physical as well, but he still needs to work on his tackling. So again, that's something I'm going to work on. He's got a good report, so he's probably one of going to be the key players in the team. And next up, another young player, 20-year-old uh, Oliver Norburn, uh, young English player. Currently, he is... What is he worth? Uh, 37.5k. His probably best ability is creative. He's going to be a good player. And again, you can judge that from his plays one twos and dictates the tempo. So he could actually be a good player in the future. If you check out his report, he has potential another uh, to be good in the Skybet League 1. So that's good. Uh, he does need to work on his marking though. He definitely needs to work on that. So I'll just go straight to that and work on his marking. I am working a lot of that for a lot of players, though. And if he is a creative player, I might want to work on his creative ability more and just make that really, really high level. Not quite too sure. What do you think is better? Do you think it's better to work on their weakest attribute or enhance his best attributes already? What do you think is better, especially for this level? Next up, David Clarkson, 121K valued. Uh, Scottish international player. Played for Scotland two times. Nothing too amazing, though. He's a striker, of course, but he can play as an attacking midfielder, but most likely will be played as a striker. Uh, but he's not really advanced forward. He's, I suppose he could play as a complete forward, even though it doesn't say it in there. I'm just comparing those other roles. They will be similar. He's a backup to the first team, though. Yeah, so, yeah, not too much to say about him. Check out his report. He's not even this level, according to them. Uh, he's weak in his pace. He's not really good. His pace is not his key level. His fitness is his best level, though. So that's what to take out of his report. Elliot Richards, another younger type, 21. He's got some speed and... I guess, yeah, attacking speed and attack is his best attributes and a bit of mental attributes as well. He seems good, but he doesn't seem really, really good. He's got some good potential as well. Uh, for this level, yeah, he seems an okay player from what I can judge anyway. you got to really... The biggest thing for me is to judging. I like to give players games on how they play in game. So you'll be you really be seeing that throughout games. And maybe I'll show you key highlights and I'll show you replays of what good players do. And yeah, I'll choose my, time, choose my team, sorry. In that way. So next up, you got Cade Muhammad. He's 28, really fast. Look how fast he is. That's he's really a key player. He's going to be down the left side or right side. I'd see he'll be good off the bench using his pace. He'll be a leading player at this level. So no doubt he's going to be a key player for me this season. He's really really fast. You can see that's his strongest area of the game. No doubt he's probably going to have bad teamwork. But those are the kind of players, wingers with a lot of pace. You got to yeah, you got to rely on them to use their pace down the wings. So getting to the end of this first team, Chris Beardsley, again, another player on loan, but another player that's a key player, five-star report. You can see here he's got some really strong attributes. And you can see attacking. I just, for a second, I just want to compare that to a good player. Like if I just check out, I don't know, I'll just check out Ronaldo, just for example, so I can see how good he looks in terms of that. So you go Ronaldo, search Portuguese, where are we? Here you go, Cristiano Ronaldo. You can see, you can really compare it to that level. He's really, really strong in that way. So I want to compare it to that level. I need to, yeah, I want to see the big player. So that's compared to him, that's how good he is. His best attribute mentally and airily. So he's going to be good in the air. So that's something you can take out of that. And you can see that from target man anyway is his best role. And he moves into channels, plays back with to the goal. Uh, looks for a pass. Again, that's something you would expect. We're just looking at his roles and his report of his 
the attribute analysis as well. He's going to be a leading player at this level, so no doubt I'll probably play him that complete forward because, yeah, he's that type. Even though it doesn't show complete forward, that's what's a similar role. He's good passing. You see, he looks for the pass rather than score, so advanced forward wouldn't suit him in that role. So we definitely need a better striker, so I'm hoping these two other strikers are a bit better. We've got Steven Gillespie, English player. He's got four-star report, and he's more of the advanced forward, the poacher type. So, uh, yeah, he's a bit fast. Good attacking, mentally, not too bad as well. So check out the report for him. Okay, he's, yeah, you can see, that's explanation there. He's not great in the air, but he's quick. That's what we need. But the hardest thing for me is to know what their finishing is. That's really going to be hard to judge. You can see, what you're going to see is there, I guess that's in attacking. Where do you think finishing will come under? Technical or attacking? Somewhere in between, I guess. But anyway, you have to judge it that way and see how he goes. And also something key in this is their weak foot ability. If they're decent on their weak foot, it's good as well. But again, nothing is going to beat being able to see them play in the game. So yeah, you just check out his report again. He's a leading player at this level. He'll be a leading striker for this league. So we'll check out our last player in the first team, and that is Ryan Brunt. He's 90k and he's a 20 year old. So no doubt he's going to be a good player in the future. Again, another target man type. We probably need another advanced forward type, if I'm honest. Just judging. So he's got a four and a half star report. A leading player for the school premier. So that's that's pretty much this level. If he's a leading player in school premier, he should be a good player at this level as well. Don't you think? Like to me, that's just logical. If you're a very good player at that level, you'll be good for the next level. So, of course, he's not a very good dribbler, so that's something to keep in mind, but he's a good work rate. He's a good team player, so that's what I get out of him, and he needs to work on his first touch, uh, according to my coach. So, I will do that, work on his first touch. I find that's an important aspect as well. So, I just want to do have a quick glance at any good young prospects in here, just the value. Uh, Matt Harold, he's someone I'm going to probably have to look at. He's a, yeah, I'm probably going to look to sell him. His report, he's not needed, so he just judging off that, he doesn't look good enough. He's a good player for school premier, and that's really not good enough for this level. But next, any young players? You've got Alice Harrison. He looks like a quick, creative player, which is good. He doesn't seem too bad physically, but of course, nothing amazing down the left side. I'll probably play him left midfield. You check his report. Has potential to be a good Skybet League 1. So we've got a good batch of players that can be good for that League 1 level. So we can we have plan for the future with these players. So that's good. And he looks like a likely type for me. Uh, a bit quick and creative. So that is good. Just check out his good attributes again. His skill. Yeah, skill. I think, yeah, I got that mixed up. Skill and flair. I tried to say that at the same time. Yeah, his skill and flair is his key attribute of the game. He's a very skillful player and his best attribute is his flair. So that's something you're going to see from him. You're going to see probably uh, him trying tricks or something. He's a flair player. You need those players in your team. So he'll be a key player, no doubt. I'll try and get him into the first team, actually. He'll be moving up to the senior squad. Any other young players of Brazilian? We've got Alafi Santos. Four-star report. If I have Brazilian in the team, he's a hot prospect as well. I'm not sure if he'll be good enough for this level. Might have to send him out on loan. You can see there, he's just good technically. That's He looks really poor there. So that's, again, probably have to send him out on loan, and the rest aren't good enough, so I won't waste your time with them. And under 18, do we have anyone? The best prospects, we've got a 16-year-old in here, Mitchell Palmer, but uh, Ryan Broom seems better. He actually could be decent, but again, it's not really, it's not someone who's going to be worth playing, giving games to. But the highest value is Pat Keery. Uh, he seems an okay defender, but still only a two-star report. So this is going to be really hard, just judging off those attributes. But hopefully you can stick around, leave your thoughts on the best players, and leave your thoughts how I should run with it, what I should do in my videos, what I should showcase, and all of that stuff. Uh, should I show? Do you want to see transfers? How I go about it? How I scout players and all of that stuff? It will be more in depth for me. I'll definitely have to scout more. Have to pay more attention because normally I just check. He's a four and a half star report. Yep, he's good. I'll keep him on my shortlist. But now I have to actually look at the scout reports more, and that probably it results in the episodes being longer. So if you enjoy longer episodes, that's how it's going to be because after it has to be more in depth. I have to look more in depth to the players. I have to really read a lot of stuff into the game, and that's what Football Manager is about, really. So. Hopefully enjoy this series. I'll probably plan it a bit more how I want it to be um, a bit later. But uh, for now, if you enjoy it, please drop some feedback and drop a like. And I'll see you guys next time.